Hello there everybody and welcome to the channel. My name is Savvy from SEAanatomy.com and for today's video we're going to be working on a rhino. So get your reference images ready and get your drawing pads or whatever you're using to work on these projects and let's get started. Now if you've seen any of our previous videos you know that we're going to start by blocking off our subject. I have shown in previous videos that there are different ways to block out your character or the animal that you are working on. It will depend on what the model or the sculptor will be used for at the end. You can model your character and have a base mesh with good topology that can be rigged and animated. Or you could do it the rough way and block out your character's major shapes using basic geometry and then remesh it and then sculpt it. This is obviously for static characters, stuff such as statues or echo shades that, that we've been working on. For the rhino, I started by planning the base mesh by drawing the major parts of the body using basic shapes. This helps speed things up a lot right at the beginning. Instead of spending too much time experimenting in 3D space, I'd much rather plan via drawings. So as you can see here, me planning everything out through drawings has helped me identify which parts of the body I would like to start with first. It's helped me see which kind of what kind of shapes I would like to go with for the base mesh rather than me ex spending all that time experimenting in 3D space and trying to figure out what actually works for the base mesh and what would uh, look best if I had to remesh it and all that. I did everything through drawings. I planned it this way. It's it's just quicker and it's a lot easier. Even though it doesn't really take off that much time if I had to do everything, if I had to plan everything just with basic shape and basic geometry in 3D, uh, it still helps a little bit. It still helps me kind of uh, plan better. I one really believe it's really important to have a good base mesh. Just the same as how it's really important to have really good primary shapes. You have to focus on your primary shapes and make sure that they're all correct. They're done well. This is because there's a lot less things to fix at a later stage once you go up in subdivision levels when your base mesh and your and your primary shapes are just done well. Also, I would say it's really good practice to work on a model that has good topology. So sculpt on a model that already has good topology. So go back and remesh some things or start from scratch. Model everything out with proper topology and all that. And then see the difference between a model with good topology and a model that's just remeshed. And uh, all this topology is just all over the place. The edge flow is just going crazy. To see the difference, you'll notice that it's much easier to work on a model with good topology. Obviously, if you're doing something that has to be done quick, you, you really don't have time to work on good topology or anything like that. And as long as it's, it's static, it's not going to be moving or anything, then sure, it's fine to just have your base mesh done with ge basic geometry and then just remesh and then sculpt it. That's fine. But if anything is going to be changed if the model is going to be moved it's going to be animated it's going to be rigged then obviously you need to have good topology and you need to have a low vert count or a low poly count but just for good practice just work on a model that has good topology and just see the difference so what i like doing at times when i'm working on these animals is i like sculpting the animal just the base animal without hair not the echo shape, just the animal, the, the model itself. I believe I did mention in a previous video that this helps me to kind of figure out what the animal would look like, uh, where these these muscle groups would fit in, where they were where they're supposed to go, how they would look, uh, if they were more like defined, if they were thinner or thicker and all that. It's just a way for me to identify things and see what the animal would look like if it had skin on. You could also do vice versa. You could work on the echo shade and then smooth things out and then like, probably have like a different model like duplicated and then see if everything fits, if everything is looks right. But obviously that would be a much longer process that would take you a lot more time. That's if perhaps you have an echo shade already and you want to have, say, like the rhino, for example, that we're working on here. Say you already completed an echo shade. 
and now you need a proper rhino now you need a rhino to work on uh, for a video or an animation or a still render for example but you want to have it have skin so you would you would smooth things out you'd smooth the echo she out think of the animal the base animal as the base animal with skin think of it as an echo she just smoothed out and then obviously there's like some flaps added there's some fat uh here and there there's like some extra details such as skin pores and all that but usually if you want to do something like that just grab the animal that you made the echo she and then smooth it out and you have your basic animal your, your base rhino that you can use for a video or an animation in a way, this method sort of helps you practice. You get used to working on animals with skin and without skin. You get used to seeing how they look and what muscle groups are supposed to look like. And so it's just a good way for you to practice as well. So now that we're starting to sculpt the echo shape, we're going to focus on our primary forms, which are the big major muscle groups, such as the latissimus dorsi or the trapezius. The trapezius of a rhino is fairly big, it's pretty huge. Then we go into the long eye and then the gastrocnemius. And then afterwards we'll go in and then start sculpting stuff such as the uh, temporalis. And then we... Um, come back into our secondary phase after we, we sculpt everything after we sculpt all our major shapes we're going to come into our secondary phase and then just start refining some things here and there and then obviously in our tertiary phase we're going to just add in more details such as the lines that go through the muscle groups and all the smaller muscles for example, much muscles such as the serratus or the subclavius will be done in our secondary phase, but then we'll just add in a lot more details in our tertiary. So as I've mentioned before, or as you will notice, the muscles of the rhino are really big. In a way, they kind of really exaggerated way more than most of the animals that we've worked on before. You'll see that its back muscles are just really big. It's almost like it has a hunchback. So the muscles around the trapezius for a rhino they, they're just kind of huge so just focus on that focus on the major shapes first and then come down to the smaller muscles and then uh, refine everything at a later stage is much easier that way also by the way remembering that i did mention that if you work on a model with proper edge flow and proper topology it's a lot easier to sculpt and all that to, to get to the final stage so over here it's totally true if you did make a, a model if you modeled everything out yourself and you have good uh, topology and all that you will notice that sculpting things is just so much easier the topology is just kind of agrees with you rather than fighting with you so if you're at this stage uh if you just started if you're just sculpting you just started sculpting and you're realizing that the topology is going really well because of the model that you've created then you did a good job but if the topology is fighting with you, you can always remesh, you can always go back and, and change things, delete the multi-resolution modifier and then uh, change some, some of the, the topology, just remodel some things here and there and then add in the multi-resolution modifier again. Also, side note, do not change anything in the mesh with the multi-resolution modifier on. Uh, the only things that you can do really is you see here is moving you can only move things if you delete any vertices you add vertices you uh, create new edge loops and all that it will freak the modifier out and blender will either crash or the modifier will just break your entire model so as i've said before i believe i've said this before as a side note that sometimes it's okay to find reference images of other animals if you just don't have any images at all for the certain view or certain muscle groups that you want to start sculpting for the current subject that you're working on so right here you can see i'm working on a rhino but i am using some reference images of a hippo some other times you will notice that if i'm working um, on a kangaroo in the kangaroo video i did use some reference images of a human some i i was looking at the uh, human pe uh, pectoralis uh, pectorals i was also looking at the forearms of a human just because they're very similar 
So sometimes you will just not find all the reference images that you need. You will have a bunch of reference images, but they're not giving you that much information, which is the reason why I say spending at least an hour and 30 minutes just gathering reference images is very crucial when it comes to the sculpting phase. It, it will help you a lot. The, the more reference images that give you enough information, the better. So sometimes it's okay to just get some references from other animals. Just don't don't copy them to like completely. You just use them as a guide. One important thing in terms of shapes, uh, when when you're working on the shape or the overall shape of your model, the character or the subject that you're working on. Uh, that I tend to forget to do from time to time. I'm just so used to working with it quickly, but it's very important for you to do this most of the time. Well, all the time, really. So I did it with the Rhino. Is just going into your shading uh, options or your shading tab and then just turning on flat, the viewport, the viewport shading options, and then just go to flat. So you will be able to see the silhouette of the model that you're working on. See if it really looks like an actual rhino or an actual um, bunny or rabbit or, or kangaroo or giraffe that you're working on so just try to make sure that the silhouette kind of reads properly you're able to get information out of that silhouette also it, it just helps you to see all the interesting features of the animal that you're working on it also goes with characters if you're not working on animals you're working on characters and you want to make sure that the anatomy is correct but also want to make sure that all the little features that you're adding onto the character are correct, such as the armor, the clothing, if he has hats, if he has swords, if the character has weapons, if he or she has a animal or a pet that they carry that they carry with them or a companion. So just seeing everything via through silhouettes helps a lot just for readability, just to make sure that everything reads properly and it looks well. Also just seeing it from afar, if you're able to see so make sure that you're looking at the silhouette and then just take a few steps back and if you're able to see that this is a rhino that you're working on then you've done a great job then the shapes are, are um they're corresponding they look they, they've been done well just make sure that your silhouette is also correct when working on these animals you also have to think about all the things that they do in their daily lives you don't have to really think about everything, but just try to keep in mind that, okay, uh, this animal is a herbivore or it's a carnivore or it hunts or it's usually the prey, that kind of thing. You have to think about, okay, is this animal a good runner? It should show that. All its muscles should show that, okay, this animal is really good at swimming, it's really good at climbing, that kind of thing. For example, when we're working on the ostrich, if you watch the ostrich video, I did go through the thought process uh, I was thinking of okay this animal is really good at running I have to show that okay this animal is good at running out that's muscles are supposed to portray that so it would seem strange if the ostrich's wings were much larger than than its legs but uh, it's it's known for running it has the legs the size of a chicken for example but it's known for running but its wings are just huge but it doesn't fly at all you see so Everything makes sense. So an ostrich doesn't really fly that much, so it it doesn't have large wings, but it runs really fast. It's, it's, it's a great runner. The ostrich is just a great runner. So its legs show that. It has large muscles around that. So just the same as the rhino. Your, your rhino is just, it normally charges. It, it, it normally bangs things with its head. It like, it, it pierces through things with, with its horn and all that. So I'm guessing that's the reason why its um, trapezius is just so large. Its back muscles are just so huge. And it has like extra extra strength and it's able to, to, to run quite fast. It's not, it's not the fastest, but it's able to run pretty fast as well. Just, uh, for example, the bear as well. When we're working on the bear, bears are able to stand up straight. Um, they're they're able to run really fast. They're pretty strong. They're able to swim. So we we went through the process of trying to make sure that the muscles were correct. Everything was correct. Everything looked fine. So everything corresponded. Everything made sense. So when you're working on all animals, even on creatures that you will be working on yourself, you can't just make an alien for example and it has 
I don't know, 12 limbs, but um, eight out of those limbs are, are, are just useless. It doesn't use them for much. It doesn't really seem like it's able to use them at all. Or for example, for for armed aliens, you have to make sure that they make sense. They, they look like they make sense. The pectorals are supposed to look like they make sense because it will have double of the pectorals. It won't just have, it won't just have uh, uh, the, the normal pecs that everyone has, like humans or anything. That also depends on what kind of alien you're making, if it's a human. But anyways, we're deviating, uh, we're going off on a tangent. Sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. But yes, it, the animal that you're sculpting, its anatomy should make sense. By the way, sometimes if you're finding it tricky to get some to to work on details that are being overlapped by other details, uh, for example, if you're working on a bone that is overlapped by uh, extensors or other muscles, then it's best for you to work on the bone first, so and then you add in the muscle groups or the extensors afterwards. Uh, it's you just overlapping you're just making sure that everything overlaps properly so sometimes yes it is irritating if you've already added in those details but you want to add in bone details you want to show like the the shibia or the or other bones that that are there you want to just have that kind of interesting look to your model uh sometimes it's just good to restart that entire part so just smooth everything out start with the bone and then add in your your muscles afterwards so you're just overlapping everything so just work as if you're in photoshop but you only have one layer kind of thing by the way sometimes if you're finding it tricky to get some to to work on details that are being overlapped by other details uh, for example, if you're working on a bone that is overlapped by uh, extensors or other muscles, then it's best for you to work on the bone first. So, and then you add in the muscle groups or the extensors afterwards. Uh, it's you just overlapping. You're just making sure that everything overlaps properly. So, sometimes. Yes, it is irritating if you've already added in those details, but you want to add in bone details. You want to show like the the tibia or the or other bones that that are there. You want to just have that kind of interesting look to your model. Uh, sometimes it's just good to restart that entire part. So just smooth everything out. Start with the bone and then add in your your muscles afterwards. So you're just overlapping everything. So just work as if you're in photoshop but you only have one layer and there you have it that's it for this video i really hope that you enjoyed watching this video i hope that you learned something if you did then be sure to watch our other videos uh, and i hope to see you in the next one